What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Iceberg Snow, aka Coach Don, and you're here on JV TV Anime. Today, we got a very special guest, a very special video, the one, the only, Rob, to show the showdown himself. I Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for having me. It's been a minute, man. We back, finally. <laughs> uh, just so y'all know, DreamCon is coming up soon, so if y'all want to check out Rob, he will be there and have probably one or two panels for y'all, so you can check it out. We got footage from the last one. It was jumping. It was Yes, nice. sir. <laughs> a great time definitely coming uh see the part two of that but today we're gonna be getting into the video for mojo's top 20 strongest one piece characters mm -hmm. uh i got a leak of the top 10 list they they, they dropped i didn't even know about this I'm, I'm i'm very curious to get rob's thoughts on this and y'all down in the comments below but we're gonna jump right into it let's do it let's do it i'm ready Hey guys, Ash here with Watch Mojo, and these are the top 20 strongest One Piece characters. For this list, we're going to be looking over the most powerful figures in One Piece. A little disclaimer, every single character on this list would have some difficulty against the others, so strength is a matter of degrees. Also, we'll be discussing the current events of the manga, so if you're not caught up to at least chapter 1053... 150... 1053. One, one okay. If there's a One Piece character whose strength you'd like to power scale against our list, unleash your hockey in the comments. And if there's another One Piece list you want to see, go to my Twitter, right. Ash J. Bo, and let me know. That was a payback word. That's what happened to him. Number 20, Zoro. It says a lot about the power level of the people on our list. Oh, wait. Zoro wait, hold on. All people so, so, I'm trying to remember. 1053. Because we're, we're, yeah. Chapter 1053. What, what happened? Cause we're 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 many chapters ahead right now. Eighty four, right? Um, I'm fifty three. Cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna go too far ahead. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Let me let me check right now. Yeah, ten fifty three. What happened with ten fifty three? Trying to remember. That's that's been a while. We only get about two or three chapters. <laughs> so that was a while ago. Just so I know how far ahead Ooh. I can go. Okay, this is the new emperors. That's the title of it. Oh, yeah. all right. Is that when? Okay, so that's probably the the chapter when Buggy was announced as a new Yonko. I'm assuming that was that chapter. I'm looking at Pierce Morgan right now. Talk about it. yeah, yeah. They they listing all the new bounties. All right, so it's it's post Wano, but it's not it's not Egghead yet. No, it looked like right after like we leave him Wano basically. Okay, this is right before they, they right before Egghead. Okay, okay. Now I now I know what's going on. Okay, okay. We can continue. Zoro at twenty. Okay. That's interesting. Very, very interesting. Barely edges onto it. He's the right hand man of Luffy, the man who will be the pirate king. His feats of strength and skill throughout the series okay, are so we do need to remember. Yeah, that makes sense. We need to remember that this is video is from like eight months. Right. That's like we're moving up, we're moving up chapter ten fifty three. So but but you saying that makes me question what what, what you're thinking though. Because <laughs> are you saying that Zoro should be what? So if if we're taking everything that happened in Wano, mm -hmm. I got how my frame of reference was before I thought about just like when this video dropped. I'm thinking Zoro should be a little bit higher than 20. Um, I'm thinking he's strong because I'm I'm assuming these are characters today, not like in the in the past. Right. Yeah, I yeah. Was it is it alive? Did they say top 20 strongest alive, or they just said top 20 strongest? Oh, it might it might be all time. If if it's all time, if it's all time, depth. Definitely. I'm okay. Yeah, that's cool. If, if, if today, I'm expecting Zoro to be like in the top 15 category. Okay. Yeah. That that could that could change. Let, yeah. I'm not mad at that. I'm not. Mad. I, I'll keep watching. His endurance is positively legendary too. We've got two words for you. Animo. Recently, Zoro has managed to injure the nigh invulnerable Kaido, as well as take down the Emperor's own right hand, King. Zoro's dream is to become the strongest swordsman in the world, and while he isn't there yet, he's in the top five at the very least. Mm -hmm. Number 10. 
number 19, Trafalgar Law. Law is one of the most powerful pirates of this mm -hmm. generation. Law should be this higher, but based on where it's at right now, 1053, I, I understand, but Law should be higher for me. I feel like... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I feel like I feel like Law's power is too OP. I feel like we honestly be letting Law skate a lot. I don't know if it's like just the um, plot armor and Oda just does that just so we don't make Law too OP. But Law's powers, he really should be a top fit, especially what he did in the war. We're seeing his awakening. I'm liking what I'm saying. I don't feel like, I feel like there should never be a time where we Law the same struggles as uh, Just Rosa. That should never happen. Yeah, well that's, see, but for the first time ever, right? Cause we're gonna have to go a little past 1053 just to paint the picture of what Law is looking like. He has, no crew but for the first time ever beppo showed up I, I, no, I, I, <laughs> which which is shocking you know what i'm saying because we're in wano big mom is upstairs you know what i'm saying <laughs> kaido is upstairs where's beppo i don't see beppo anywhere but now we finally got to see beppo do something so <laughs> now that law has a little bit of help but beforehand the reason why i rate law so highly is because he really did not have a, a crew to really depend on and he still was able to contend against the blackbeard pirates who again marshall d teach has two of the deadliest devil fruits in one piece in the yami yami no mi in the guru guru no mi right top tier all around obviously as a devil fruit user and then he also has a nasty crew i mean they are not anybody to really play with everybody of uh, the dot q use his fruit against law and law had to use his hockey to show out just a little bit law is really in the he's really up there now his his dumb fruit awakening did help him lead the fight against big mom with kid so for me i still think that law fighting a yonko crew by himself for the most part is impressive bebo didn't show up until it was dire straits laws about to die nobody else was really there to help him you know what i'm saying john bart was there but it wasn't really anything special so law being able to do that and survive a situation like that i think is still an incredible feat like that's i give i give him props for that if law had a crew it would be totally different 100 percent. i think because like honestly i believe blackberry really got a top two top crew out right now mm -hmm. like there ain't nothing to, nothing to sneeze at especially yeah. without Kuji in the back and there you go um, so I definitely give Law his props for hanging with a uh, Blackbeard because personally, I think Blackbeard is a top two Yonko. Right. So what I say when I mean what happened to Dress Rosa should never happen, I want like a 1v1 situation because Law is true for the most part. I mean, that, that's mostly just, so the fact that uh, Beppo is stepping up now, that's definitely going to help in the back pocket. You need Needed him. Needed like, him. Who knows? <laughs> who knows how long we would have lasted? But in a 1v1 situation, I can't see anybody like Do Flamingo just handle. Because remember, the Dress Rosa was 118 episodes. But then all that time, Law lost his arm. Mm -hmm. Shot in broad daylight. And he really just got embarrassed. And I feel like with a power that Oda wrote for him, it should never be that case. Like, I agree with you. I think 19 is too low. Um, yeah. But I mean, hey, he's, he's showing me more. Yeah. Um, Next, I, I want to see him be able to take on a Yonko by his side. How do you feel about Law over Zoro? Because I know that's the big thing. Crazy enough, we had a debate on our show about that a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. Um, personally, I still got. I'm, I'm taking Zoro. Okay, me, I, I'm I'm law, I'm law, but I get I get it. I get it from a hockey standpoint. Right. But uh, for me, I think there's a couple of things I'm still waiting to see from Zoro. Um, and Law has proven to me at least with having one of the greatest Devil Fruits I've ever seen. <laughs> Plus, his hockey is stepping up. You know what I'm saying? And he's fighting a Yonko plus his crew. I mean, he's fighting Blackbeard and Doc Q's attacking him at the same time. Like, there's a lot that Law had to deal with. Um, and I'm not saying Zoro can't stand against a Yonko because he was able to scar Kaido. But, uh, you know, that took everything out of him. And after that, it was pretty much, you know, <laughs> it was what it was. You know what I'm saying? Zoro gave him his all and he was only able to scar him. But then again, Blackbeard and Kaido, that's a whole other conversation, whether you have Blackbeard or Kaido higher or lower versus each other. I have Kaido higher, so you know, it, it's it's I, I get it. it's a tough conversation. It's a tough conversation to have. Zoro's a better swordsman, but Law is more tactical. So yeah. I think I think if the show went the way I want it to go, then Law would win just off of his ability alone and mm -hmm. his strategic mindset. But I feel like Law, I don't want to say doesn't reach his full potential. I don't think he's wasted potential, but I feel like his full character, there's a lot more that could be unfolded. Right. Like, I 
feel like Zero is definitely gonna max out his full, like the whole character uh, description total, like power wise, uh, full circle wise. I think Zero is gonna end up stronger. But I do want, I just want Law to show me he got that dog in him. That's what I want. Right. But locking him or Yanko on his own, then that's that's what I need to. Be. Right. At one point, we looked at them as, as rivals. I, I don't look at that anymore. <laughs> don't look at it this way. Like that <laughs> yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. Yeah, it's Luffy. Yeah, it's Luffy. Definitely. Yeah, kid. And... Create zones or rooms in which he has near complete control over everything inside. Swap their personalities, lift heavy things, and even teleport himself or others. Got like nine powers. <laughs> Mm hmm And that's before the awakening, by the way. That's before. That's exactly. I feel like it's, it's really not many people who should he lose. Used his kid managed right. to take down one of the four emperors, Big Mom. If he'd done it solo, or if the effort didn't nearly kill him, we'd put him higher on this list. Honestly, if Oda wrote law as powerful as his broken abilities really are, he'd be so unstoppable he'd break the story. <laughs> Look at this man. Number 18, Isho, aka Fujitora. One of the traditional trio of Marine Admirals, the strongest I, part oh, of the world it. government's military, Isho. A little bit higher. Um, see, maybe prior to what happened with Sabo and the Revolutionary Army in the Holy Land. Huh? Today, Sabo or 10? Oh, 1053 Sabo. Did that happen yet? <laughs> I think it was it announced, but not, but I don't, I don't, because I remember, it. okay, I remember them announcing the, you know what, it might, that might have been the back page of that chapter or something, something like that. I don't know, yeah, depending on when, the, when it was announced that, you know, Sabo and, you know, the Revolutionary Army commanders held off Green Bull, they held off Fujitora and freed kuma and now we're seeing even more of a backstory with that but after seeing all that go down we get that the admirals had to hold back i still think fujitor should be higher on this list like a little bit higher on this list but i don't think it's like top 10 or something like that you know what i mean yeah 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 you know what i mean so i like i'm not i'm not angry at it it's just kind of like okay you know let me let me see who they put above him that's where i would be like i would have to stop but <laughs> Old heads coming up soon. Right. Better known as his alias Fujitora, is among the newest additions to the group. Fujitora may be blind, but his observation haki is strong enough that he can sense his surroundings without sight. What really makes this wisteria tiger terrifying, though, is his devil fruit ability. <laughs> Hey, that's your boy Zoro, man. Fujitora what happened? has the power to control <laughs> gravity within selected areas. This means out. he can make things float, no matter their weight. Like that time he almost used an entire country's worth of mm. rubble to this crush crazy. Luffy's allies. This is crazy. Fujitora can also increase gravity's effects too, crushing someone into the ground or cooling down a meteor from orbits. Definitely a top 10 devil fruit to me. You would think, yeah. Nice. He does it with ease. He could easily just bring a, a mirage of him. Marco, okay. Pirates for decades. Marco. He's in an exclusive tier of pirates. In terms of defensive capabilities. Mm. Are, you, are you taking Marco over? I'm not taking Marco over law. I'm going to put that out there. I'm not doing that. Um, I'm not taking Marco over law. Not not, not what law is doing right now. I don't think Marco. I don't think Marco's. They, they going up that 1053. Yeah. Well, I'm. Oh, could that happen? Okay, no. Nah, you're right. You're right. Well, even even Law post Wano, not not really Blackbeard yet, but post Wano, you know, Devil Fruit Awakening, come on. I still okay, think yeah. I still think I'm taking I'm still think I'm taking Law. We love Marco. Marco fought King and Queen at the same time. Am I taking Marco over Fujitora though? Ah, I don't know. 
I don't know. See, I, I, I see why people would offer of regeneration alone, but Marco right. a little bit older the season. Like he fought king and queen at the same time. But he did stop know. Big Mom too. But it, it, I, so the long. thing is, the thing is, Marco's elite. It's just the stuff that Marco has shown us. I don't think it's something that Fujitora can't do, right? And so, I don't think I don't think I've seen a feat from Marco that I that I think Fujitora would wouldn't be able to pull up. But maybe maybe he does. They put him one spot over, so maybe I could give that to him because he can't heal himself. Um, that's fair. But and I know you you know Shanks wanted to pick him up. Shanks doesn't just pick up anybody. You know he wanted to pick Marco up, bring him to the crew. You know so he knows what's going on. Shanks knows something. Uh, I do think Marco's elite. I just Fujitora. I think it, I think they're let's say they're relative. I'm I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at saying they're relative. I'm more mad about Marco being over law personally. Than, than I feel like if it was Marco from the the war first war, but I do still get because I feel like Marco is closer to his prime back then. But, um, that's mm. I'm just cool. Yeah. Capabilities, Marco might have the best power in the whole series. <laughs> Able to turn into a phoenix, Marco can use his regenerative blue flames to heal himself and others from nearly any injury. Marco has clashed oh. with multiple mm. admirals. He's fought Big Mom. Yeah, see, this is like the... This is the real deal. He's even battled two of Kado's commanders simultaneously. Yeah, see? Still, while this pineapple head can hold yeah. his own among that's what I'm saying, top, I'm, I'm cool with him being over Ujitora. To give him many big right. not a lot, but a little Number bit. Number 16, Borsellino, aka Kizaru. He may speak at a snail's pace, but Borsellino, better known as Kizaru, is arguably the fastest character in One Piece. This sharply dressed Yo, marine this admiral. Would it be disrespectful to the JV TV anime fans? Sorry, okay. would it be disrespectful for me to say I think Zoro? <laughs> would it be disrespectful if I say I think Zoro can box with Kizaru? Is that disrespectful? Yo, pause this for a sec. Would it be disrespectful? To the JV TV anime fans, sorry. Okay. Would it be disrespectful for me to say I think Zoro? <laughs> Would it be disrespectful if I say I think Zoro can box with Kizaru? Is that disrespectful? It's not disrespectful. If we, if we, <laughs> we incorporate everything we just seen in, in Wano. I'm, I'm on board with that. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, okay. I just had to think because I'm like, he's sitting a comfortable lead ahead of Zoro right now. And I think if Zoro fights Kizaru, I, I'm i not going to sit here and say, yeah, Kizaru's winning. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's a very good... He, Sanji. You could put Sanji in there. You could put Sanji in there. I thought the matchup was honestly going to be Sanji and Kizaru uh, when I when we heard that Kizaru was on the way to, uh, to Egghead. I yeah. Thought. I thought I thought that's who who was gonna box him. Um, but we don't even see we, we haven't been on Egghead really in a minute these past couple of chapters, yeah. so we don't even know what's going on. Like maybe maybe that is what happens, you know. So we'll see we'll see what's going on. But yeah, like Sanji versus Kizaru is a conversation. So exactly, if Zoro is behind him, I'm already yeah nah. Kizaru got to be lower for me, or Zoro got to be higher. They got to rework this. Now that I'm thinking about it, we haven't even heard Sanji's name yet. If he's not above, if he's not near Zero, he's probably not gonna be. Mm. I doubt they got him in front of. It, it depends. It depends if we get to see their thinking on, let's say, a Big Mom and a Kaido, because they're looking at 10:53. So right. if we're assuming right. that they're dead and they're not on the list then not having Sanji here is disrespectful, right? Because you're not even putting Big Mom and Kaido, you know what I'm saying? But if Big Mom and Kaido and everybody's still here, then it's like, okay, I can see maybe why Sanji got nudged out a little bit, but he should still be top 20. Sanji should still be top 20, Um, you know, yeah. That's interesting. 
we gonna see. Turned him into light. In addition to making him inhumanly quick and letting him deliver devastating kicks, Kizaru's power also lets him fire lasers that can cause mass destruction. <laughs> I have a feeling the next one's gonna be Rayleigh. If that sounds overpowered, that's because it is. However, since Observation Hockey can let characters dodge things before they happen, and a lot of the strongest characters have it, then- really, Honestly, I'm thinking about it. Didn't like, uh, and I can't remember when. I feel like on Egghead, a few chapters ago, didn't they say Sanji had like some new, um, some new advantage like against light or some new uh, asset that deals with light or Vegapunk has a light invention distorter? Um, you hear that? I don't remember, but I remember Sanji tanking an attack from, from S Shark and he just ate it. Direct attack that. from the Seraphim and just ate it. Didn't even feel it really. In terms of the light though, I don't remember. I feel like they're Loki. Th there was like they kind of snuck it in, like it was just like mentioned, and then Vegapunk just went to something else. And I was like, damn, that sounds important. Yeah, I like, have to I go back. Boy, but yo, I just, I'll probably have to look at it again too. It's been a minute. Kizaru isn't ranked as high as you might expect. <laughs> Man, first time seeing that. <laughs> crazy, you're really crazy. We're not saying he isn't a walking, slow talking disaster. You're like, yo, that's Luffy now? Post time? Yo. <laughs> Before, you remember, it took the whole crew to fight one passenger, so now all of a sudden he just dodging him. I felt like that, that was perfect to him to, to come back there and like just demonstrate the difference. Right yeah. Now. Luffy came back, he said, I'm him. I was like, yeah. yeah. Say, hey, bro. <laughs> oh, man, you got it. Clearly, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Number 15, Sengoku. While the ex fleet admiral of the Marines may be known you know primarily what? for his strategic mind, and. Based on what I just saw Garp do a couple weeks ago, I'm not mad. I'm not mad. No, yeah, I, I think Garp is higher. Yeah, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Garp, Garp is definitely higher than Sengoku, but. Um, him and Sengoku, you, you know, they had a little duo back in the day. They fought against Shiki together. Um, so I'm not mad at this. I'm not mad at this. So as a, let me ask you, as a, I guess a devil fruit or just a power in general, how do you feel about this Buddha statue trope that goes on in it? Um, I think it's very powerful based on, you know, it can create shockwaves that have Blackbeard and his crew literally held down for a little while. Um, I don't know if we've seen Sengoku use it to its fullest extent, so I can't go all out. But what I will say is, if we know anything about mythical zones, right? And we know that <laughs> Luffy has a mythical zone, Sengoku has a mythical zone, there may be a better awakened version of what Sengoku has right now. So I don't even want to rule that out. Um but i'll leave it i'll leave it at that i think he's still i think there's still maybe a chance for us to see a higher form of sengoku uh based on what we've seen him from marine ford um but i i can't sleep on a mythical zone you know what i'm saying i think you know marco marco has one luffy has one sengoku has one i can't i can't sleep on those uh, um i definitely think sengoku's ability is strong i think um honestly i feel like his his ranking is damn near where it should be somewhere in that top 15 spot right 13. right um but i feel like it's hard for me to just like scale it when i see it in shows like like it's not the exact same in, in hunter hunter but oh you were saying all oh you're saying overall oh i was thinking just one piece yeah okay okay no yeah because in one piece i mean it's just him but like just an overall like besides like their abilities are different if we're going off of um you know him in the the mass master hunter ability but like it's the overall you know same concept of the, the golden buddha so i don't really just know like what the scaling yeah yeah i mean I next rose is a little different because it's yeah. hundred hands uh, uh yeah, 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 yeah but it's more netro kind of had it more on he used it more defensively whereas sengoku is more on the offensive but something that i didn't really see netro have was like a shockwave like blast that sengoku really is using um which is interesting you know what i'm saying so i th i still think that sengoku may have another ceiling that we haven't seen yet 
Okay. I think you bring up a good point. Um, because at first I wasn't even thinking about him having an awakening. Oh, so he he may he may have went half half uh way in the war. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even think about that. Style and Afro, Sengoku the Buddha is also one of the strongest navy soldiers. His ability to turn into a huge living Buddha statue that can make shockwaves is strange but effective. <laughs> Sengoku has kept up with his good friend Garp for decades in their battle against pirates. Hell, he was ready to take on Blackbeard's whole crew by himself. See? Come on now. Yeah, you like that. You, you want it, you want it, Maybe the biggest evidence of Sengoku's strength is that time he held back Garp from trying to kill a Kainu. Not many people could restrain a furious and heartbroken Garp the Fist. <laughs> Man, <that's crazy. laughs> Number 14, Kozuki Oden. This okay, hold on. Time out, time out now, time out now. Because now we know. Now we know. Dead or alive. We know dead or alive now. Yeah, we do. We this list is crazy. It's dead or alive now. This list is crazy. Sanji's not in it. Sanji, Sanji didn't make it. it. Um. <laughs> hey, we better see rocks. We better we see um Roger. Roger. We better see white beard. Yeah. I need to see. I'm telling you. I'm telling. This list is crazy. I'm telling you right now. If this is if this is dead or alive now, they just put Odin on the list. So, so I, I don't even. I, I'm gonna leave it at that, man. I'm gonna leave it. Crazy. I'm gonna leave it at that. I see how Sandy maybe got nudged out the back door, possibly. Um, because mm. now that I'm thinking about it, I'm I'm listening to everybody they put on the list so far. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm taking out anybody that Sandy. Like the closest comparison would have been like that 2019 spot of Zoro and and Law. And but the thing is, they're doing they're doing they're doing dead or alive. So now we're in a point where yeah. some of those people we read might not even they might not be here. I, I got to see what they what they because dead or alive. There's already a decent number of spots in the top ten that are preoccupied already. Unless the, yeah. Watch Moments will drop the ball. I'm hoping they didn't do that. <laughs> um, yeah, for sure. Let's let's see. Possessing charisma in spades, Odin has some of the most impressive acts in the series in his resume. Even as a child, the Kozuki heir performed ridiculous feats, like knocking out a bear. He could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Whitebeard briefly. Odin very nearly killed Kaido, and even gave that nigh-invincible creature a permanent scar. His endurance and pain tolerance are on another level entirely. He held onto the chain behind Whitebeard's ship for three days, but most impressive of all is his death, where he survived being boiled alive for an hour. What a beast. Yeah. Yo, I was telling my people the other day, this was honestly the realest anime moment I've seen in a very long time. Like, I think Odin is probably the realest anime. That's oh. not an MC. Oh, okay. Like, taking MCs out. Yeah. Just side characters. This is probably some of the most down shit I ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Same, so many. Yeah. Like, Odin's golden. Odin's golden. Oh, uh, not matter. Hold on. Ooh, okay. Wait, is this still playing? It's it's on thirteen now. Oh oh, my mine just went to an ad real quick, so I gotta. Oh, that's cool. I can uh, I can back up some because something crazy just kind of happened, honestly, to me. Okay, how do I back out of this ad though? There it is. You on nine thirty six? Uh, it's okay. You could put you could you could do it from where it is right now, as long as it's still on Odin. Yeah. Yeah. But... Oh, Kuzan? Kuzan may not be an admiral yeah. anymore. So, so this is personally, I got Odin over Alki. Let me know if I'm Kuzan. Um, I think uh, Odin. I, I think yeah. I have Odin. I think I have Odin over over Alkiji as well, man. I, I, I think the hockey. 
again, you're fighting against Prime Whitebeard. You survived. Yeah, yeah, you survived the direct attack from Roger. I mean, these are things that I I can't I can't based on what based on what Garp was just doing the other day. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I can say that Kuzan is gonna be doing what Odin's doing. Like I just I I don't know if I can say that. Now I do think Kuzan's elite. If you want to say he's top 15, but I don't I don't know if he's doing all that. I think he's over um the light admiral as well, or Kizaru. But oh I I, don't, I can't give him Odin unless he's about to show me something in the chapters to come. Right. But then if if not, I, I can't give him Odin just yet. Yeah. Oh. But you'd be wise to put some respect on his name. During his tenure with the Marines, Aokiji illustrates to the audience why there's so much respect for his former rank. He's one of the few opponents to land Luffy a complete defeat. The, mm -hmm. the Blue Pheasants Ice Bowers are among the strongest Logia abilities out there, capable of freezing huge swaths of ocean, even tsunamis. Perhaps the greatest testament to his strength is his off-screen battle with fellow former Admiral Akainu. Despite being at a natural disadvantage due to their powers, Aokiji still held on for 10 days and managed to permanently mm -hmm. alter the climate on Harvard Island. Need a top tier animation for this fight too. Boy, Number 12, that. Silver's Rayleigh. Okay, Rayleigh finally came in. King, Silver's Rayleigh, Rayleigh finally is a came in. Legend. A swordsman well versed in Hold on, wait, you, you have something to say. Rayleigh is um, about the, the Akainu crap? No, 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 no. I thought you were talking something about Rayleigh. Um, no, no, no. I was, I was, I was wondering when they was going to bring him in. Um, 12. I honestly thought he'd be like 8. Um, see, the only, th the only thing now. Is it depends on who? Cause now it's dead or alive. Right. See, if it was alive, if he was, if it was alive, Rayleigh's auto top ten. But since it's dead or alive, I have to okay. see. I have to see how what the, I have to see what they're talking about. Because right. he could still technically be top ten, dead or alive. But I gotta see what they're on. I gotta see. That's why I'm chilling for now. Let me let me ask you this: How far do you think the gap is between Rayleigh and Odin? Um, that's a great question. I think we got to see Rayleigh enthusiastic about fighting Odin, but Roger wanted to step in. Um, I think that really, at least at that time, I still think that really would be able to contend with Odin. I think that he literally is, if you look at Shanks and Ben Beckman, you look at Luffy and Zoro, that's who really is to Roger. So he's, an, he's at least an approximation of his captain. They have a similar fighting style. Rayleigh uses a sword. He's a hockey master. He spent six months with Luffy. Luffy entered into the new world, and then everybody said, okay, the Straw Hats are actually here. This is actually an issue now. This is a problem now. That's how powerful Rayleigh is. So I think just off that alone, the only thing you really should be worrying about is his old age, and that's the only thing that he's worried about. He's not worried about his skill set. He's just worried about the rust that he's accrued over time. And we got to see in the Amazon Lily, Blackbeard saw Rayleigh and said, I don't think I can handle Rayleigh. Rayleigh saw Blackbeard and said, I don't think I can handle Blackbeard. Somebody lying. Somebody <laughs> is lying. All right. So I don't know who it is, but one of them is not, not telling the truth or is one of them is wrong. And, and if they're at least in that conversation with each other, Rayleigh should be technically top 10. But because this is dead or alive, I have to wait and see because I want to see how far they go. Are they, are we talking Ryuma? Are we going off the rails? Like, I got to see what we're talking about. That's that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. That's where I'm chilling. Let's find out. Enough to clash with the likes of Kizaru and come away unscathed. <laughs> Was crazy. He can mm -hmm. knock out a room full of people with his conqueror's haki with enough precision to omit those he wishes to keep standing. <laughs> the
the man once swam through the monster-infested calm belts and had enough strength to kill some of its inhabitants. <laughs> Rayleigh may be a senior citizen now and semi-retired, but he's still monstrously powerful. Number 11, Mihawk. Oh! While we haven't seen him go all out, <laughs> what we've seen of Hawkeye Mihawk so far is incredible. Nah, Mihawk fans are in the mud. Mihawk didn't even crack top 10? Oh man, that couldn't be my goal. But, but, <laughs> but either way, you know, uh, this is crazy. I honestly, honestly, me. Right now, my number one right now is Shanks. I mean, it, he's it's been Shanks for for the past, I would say, three years. About I said that Shanks was the strongest alive in the One Piece world. Um, but since this is dead or alive, you know what I'm saying. It is what it is. I don't know if you, uh, Shanks is not gonna have that number one spot because it's dead or alive, and I'm, I'm cool with that. But um, you know, as long as Whitebeard and Shanks are placed properly, I will have. I, I will relax. That's what I need to see. It looks like Shanks is over Mihawk. I, I, listen, <laughs> you know me. I'm Team Shanks. I'm gonna speak. Step up for all the, the Mihawk fans right now. Ooh. Look about this gross miss error. <laughs> <laughs> uh, seeing that they made a mistake with where uh, <laughs> Fuji Toy was, so this wouldn't be their first one. But hopefully, it'll be the last. Um, I, I gotta ask you, as a strong Shanks fan. Mm-hmm. I need you to honestly to me stand up for what 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 shanks did to you yeah like he got the dub that's cool yeah really i felt like the shanks fan aren't y'all upset the first Shanks fight we get to see is against didn't y'all wanted to see something more alluring or worthy I gotta ask you, as a strong Shanks fan, mm -hmm. I need you to honestly, to me, stand up for what 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 Shanks did to you. Yeah, like he got the dub. That's cool. Yeah, really, I felt like the Shanks fan. Aren't y'all upset? The first Shanks fight we get to see is against. Did not y'all wanted to see something more alluring or worthy? It was it wasn't the fact that he took down kid all right oh, it's it's what he did to kid <laughs> it's what he did to kid and the kid pirates because remember it wasn't just kid all right kid was one of the people that got hit killer who happened to be the other person on the roof with kid against kaido by the way got hit collateral damage checks was like oh my bad i didn't even mean to hit you you just got caught up in the hockey he passed out too whole crew got bodied right and that was him off of one attack one attack yo what the hell the giants destroying the ship as well what yeah the majority of is coming from right so and i get that because I, I read all of that too yeah was... crazy crazy because kaido, kaido kaido didn't do that but he saw kid and, and killer he didn't do that and at that time kid was weaker Kid was weaker at that time, y'all. He didn't even have his Devil Fruit Awakening. Kid didn't even have it yet. Kid had Devil Fruit Awakening when he saw Shanks. And Shanks said, oh man, all right, let me just deal with him real quick. One hit KO. <laughs> One hit KO. Two worst generation pirates. One hit KO. Come on. Give him his flowers. I'm not, I'm not denying any of that. All of that happened. Yes. Give him his flowers. Come on. My thing is, I think Shanks going up against Kid and killer in that situation mm -hmm. different than Kaido going up against the worst generation while also flying the island above us to where we going. Um, <clears throat> I feel like anybody, any Yonko, and I miss any Yonko in Shank's situation could have done that to Kid, which is why I don't, I don't reward fish for swimming in that regard. <laughs> I think it was a, it was a <laughs> All right, let me ask you this. Is Mihawk doing that? Same thing. Without now, let me let me say this. Mihawk has the capability of doing this. I I, I I hope for his sake and his fandom. I hope so. Wow. I wow. hope so. Character is mm -hmm. a little bit more dramatic, and he likes flair because clearly he could have did the same thing to Zero way back then. But he he took the time to just teach him 
who the superior swordsman was. Right. I think uh, Mihawk would take his time on Kid as well. Sure. The same amount of damage is taking place. Mihawk's doing the same thing. To but along with that, every other Yonko who is a Yonko today is doing that to Kid. That's, that's not like a feat to me to take on Kid in that manner. It's, there's such a power scaling gap. It's so, it's not close. But, but, but hold on. on. Hello. But Big, no, but Big needed Maw's help. Without Law, he's not handling Big Maw. You're right. He's doing that to kid. You're well. Hold on. So wait, you're you're right. You're right in that regard, right? That he didn't need Law's help. But that's where I'm saying. That's where Kid unlocked his his Devil Fruit Awakening. And Kid also has Conqueror's Hockey. So it's not like oh, everybody has Conqueror's Hockey. Everybody got it. Yo, and Mihawk got it. I hope. I hope he do. I hope he do. No, I I actually do. I'm just trolling right now. I actually do think he has. I think, but it wasn't confirmed. It wasn't confirmed. That's the only. It wasn't confirmed. You know what I'm saying? For his sake, I hope he does. I think he does. You know what I'm saying? I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But you know, you know, dang. I want to see how many spots above Mihawk they have Shanks, because that would be the real. That would be the real disrespect. Like if me, if Shanks is saying that like two. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that five to seven range uh he's higher than that but out of five he's he's higher than seven he's higher than seven i gotta i gotta see i gotta see who they have i gotta see if it's like rocks roger and them then it's like okay i gotta see who they have i, I feel like it's gonna be them up there or at least it should be yeah white beard dark um we gotta get back to that yeah, Mihawk, Mihawk. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. Oh, wait, we did not see Captain Kid. Wait, we didn't see Captain Kid on this. Wow, and we the fact that we didn't notice for this long. <laughs> wait, no, nah, because I'm thinking, I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, nah, wait. Captain uh, Kid. Okay, let me 10, 50, if, if it's right after the war. This is right, this is post Wano. This is right after post Wano. Right after Wano, actually. So, yeah, we're in post Wano territory. We're on the ships or whatever, getting ready to leave. Kid, kid just took down Big Mom with Law, and he didn't make. He didn't make it. I mean, so boom. I'm gonna I'm say this, and you can let me know if I'm wrong, and I'm respecting the Shonen Showdown community when I. Wait, <laughs> is this a debate, Sanji over Kid? Man? Oh, ah, oh. Sanji. Wait, ten fifty three, Sanji, or Sanji right now? I'm, I'm gonna go. I mean, it's, we can say ten fifty. Okay. Because all right, ten fifty three. Technically, 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 kid, kid should be stronger than Sanji. Technically, correct. Technically, right. I do. I give Sanji a fighting chance. I do. I do. Especially with all the things he just incorporated with his raid suit so morphing into his body. Dude. Right. He has the exoskeleton. He's you know what I'm saying. Judge, judge, right. judge, soup them up now. German double six, he souped them up now. That, they they're looking like Lunarians fused with something else. I don't know. Sanji's got and something. Stronger, but visibility as well. I'm not gonna lie. But kid on paper, kid should be able to defeat Sanji. Right. He should. Like that's I think not. Kid, I think I feel like it's crazy. disrespectful for us to say that kid can't even beat Luffy's third stringer. You know what I'm saying? That to me that sounds crazy. Like. He should be able to. If Yamato did actually join the crew and, and stay with them, I don't think Kid will be able to beat the fourth. And if <laughs> y'all decide where y'all have Sanji and Yamato, I got Yamato a little bit stronger than Sanji. So he would be the I got, in that place. I, have, I think it's still a debate. See, for me, this list is already off because and that was the next person I was going to bring up because I think Yamato should be on this list. I think Yamato should be higher than... Yamato should be... Top 10. Top, not top 10. But maybe I think Yamato should be top fifteen because we're doing dead or alive. Yamato yeah, fought against alive. Kaido one v one, in which you know and, in there and hung it out right boxing. So held it down for a minute until Luffy got back, and, and there you go. So Kid, Kid and Sanji. I mean, I I think Kid should be above Sanji. I do, I, I do. Why. I give Sanji a fighting chance though. I just think. It's just, I, I don't know. I feel like it's disrespectful to say Sanji it is disrespectful, but I'm It's a, disrespectful. This is I say it warrant, the disrespect is warranted. Because on paper, it was supposed to be Luffy's rival since Saba Oe. Mm -hmm. They haven't really just been looking like rivals. Yeah. When, when, it, it, yes. In, in comparison to Luffy, you can disrespect Kid as much as you want. I, I'm, I will sign off on all of that. But right. now we're going down the straw hats. We're saying, all right, Robin, yeah. Nami, uh, Sanji, maybe. Like, that was like, all right, now we're being foul. Now we're being foul. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
that's where I'm kind of like, all right, I, I I could give him, I give Sanji a fighting chance though. Like I wouldn't be shocked if Sanji did beat Kid, but I think that yeah. Kid should be right. And that's what it is. Right. Okay. I won't. Shit on Kid should definitely win that fight. Right. Right. He fought against Big Mom and all. That. Like, come on. You know, Sanji's elite, but like he fought Queen. Queen's not Big Mom. You know what I'm saying? So it's he's not Big Mom. You know what I mean? I, I could push that and say Brooke also fought Big Mom and lived to tell about it. So I think Sanji could... Sanji... Sa yeah, Sanji could, right. could... He could contend, but it's like Big Mom... Big Mom yeah, got defeated. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean right. Say, say we swap our kid for Sanji. Was Law and Sanji. Do they still win that fight? I don't know. But I think it's discussion. I think it's close. Do they still win? I don't know. I think I don't know. We gotta utilize Law's ability a little bit more. Uh, damn it, the way they was doing it, but just more. And we gotta see if we can. Cause you gotta remember, it was Kid who pushed Big Mom out of Onigashima with his rail yeah. with the rail gun. That's right. And it was also Kid that made Shanks jump up and say, "Okay, I can't play around with this guy. He's about to destroy mad ships. I gotta jump and get him." You know? Cause okay. Se you know Shanks saw the future. So uh, realistically, like. I know we love to disrespect Kid because of what Shanks did to him and what all these Yonko are doing to, doing to him. But again, every time Kid's been disrespected, it's been against Yonko. Like, he didn't let, like, right. you know, right. any peons, like, dis you know what I'm saying? Like, he, we're talking real powerful pirates have disrespected him. So it's like, I can't say that, you know, Sanji's going to come in here and do that too. Well, okay, now I will say this. They just haven't put a name on it yet. But whoever took Kid's arm the first time he tried Shanks, mm hmm wasn't the upper crust of the crew. And I feel like that should be addressed at some point. True. Whether we address that today or by... But it wasn't even top crew members that took away his arm. Right. But I think he had no business being on Shanks' ship. You know what I'm saying? Like, at that that's stage... The, at that stage in his career? What are you that's doing? The, that's the, I don't think he had business being on the ship the second time either. <laughs> <laughs> and that's... Yeah. Like that was like disrespect. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is, it's the truth. <laughs> It is the truth. Between those two, where he was like, I was like, when I was watching what he was doing, I was like, bro, you're not ready for this. You should, right. <laughs> you should abort this mission. But I feel like I gotta say, um, as we've been having this conversation about Kid and Sanji and Law and the Big Mom fight, I do need to frame because we have been looking at it like um, they really won that fight. Personally, I've, I've been of the sound mind of if they were on land and that fight happened, I think they lose. I think the only advantage they had was to get Big Mom like discombobulated, thrown off of the um, island while it was um So I think if that fight takes place somewhere else, I don't know if. Mm, that's an interesting, but, that's an interesting, mm -hmm, interesting take. That's not what happened. No. So we'll, we'll go off of what happened so you can say they won. <laughs> <laughs> World famous as the strongest swordsman alive, Mihawk is the one who every I'm other swordsman of note <laughs> aims to surpass. During their first meeting, Mihawk positively toyed with Zoro before giving him a grievous wound as a memento. Look what he's doing to the future world's strongest swordsman. Mm. During the Marine Fort battle, he got he got to go through shakes. Just how powerful he is. Uh, in I noticed I noticed in that fight with kids. That Shanks fought with his sword. He did. Make Shanks a swordsman. It, it it would. It would make Shanks a swordsman. We, we know Mihawk has the world's greatest swordsman. He does have that. But didn't the Marine say something about uh sword skills? Like his sword skills are the, are better. I believe that was the. I believe that's what I saw on the on the um when they talked about you know Marine Hunter the Marine Hunter uh Mihawk. They said that his sword skills are what made him. You know the greatest oh, source. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay yeah. I, I just wanted to leave it at that because to me, I mean, Shanks is a hockey man. So. I hear. I don't. I don't know somebody who used to go at it with Mihawk all the time with his sword to now suddenly be a hockey man when he loses. <laughs> well, I don't know. We gonna see what Mojo talk about because clearly, you know. <laughs> To so them, Mihawk not even top ten. That's tough. <laughs> that's, that's tough. <laughs> Says Zoro been working all his life. Zoro been working all his life to be number eleven. 
That's crazy to me. <laughs> his strength into perspective, <laughs> yeah, Mihawk remains one of the few characters the we've yet to see down injured down. in a fight. <laughs> he was even considered a rival <laughs> of one of the four emperors. <laughs> Number 10, Charlotte Linlin, aka Big Mom. A now former See, the company the he Emperors, with, Big uh, Mom may be an enormous Big mother, Mom at her core, yeah. she's a spoiled okay. titanic child. However, that only makes her more erratic and terrifying. Her ability revolves around souls. She can tear people's souls out of their bodies and imbue objects and animals with life and intelligence even commanding living fire and lightning. Personally, I think Rayleigh should be close to Big Mom. How close? What was really like? Big Mom is also able to yeah. heal herself oh, no, it's 12. her own lifespan, which can also increase her already I think. huge size. Her physical strength is I think. no he was somewhere either. top 15. Somewhere. Lin Lin can hold her own against Kaido. Even though she's eventually defeated by Kid and Law, we aren't counting her out just yet. <laughs> Number 9, Sakazuki, aka Akainu. The living embodiment of the Marines' extremism, Sakazuki is also, also the man currently running nine. the Navy, also known as the Red wow. Dog. So the, the Admiral fans, Admiral, has control Admiral fans are up. They said Mihawk can't even beat. <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> we haven't, we haven't heard. Wow. Okay. Kind of way. This is nine. He said nine. nine. Hey, Garp. They didn't say anything about Garp yet. Yeah, that just goes Garp. to show. Luffy. I haven't said a um, few big names, honestly. Okay. All right, that's the lava as well as fittingly zero chill. <laughs> a Kainu can create a fiery rain of magma fists the size of battleships. Not only are his powers impressive, he also has superhuman endurance. He tanked a quake punch from an angry white beard and came back for more. Even the arrogant Blackbeard ran away when he heard Akainu was coming for them. <laughs> Whether it's Luffy or Sabo who ends up facing Akainu in the end, Ace's brothers will have their work cut out avenging him. Damn. They call him the donut maker. That's Number so eight, crazy. Kaido. <laughs> this is a tough one because we were always crazy. told that Kaido was the world's eight. strongest creature, but recent events may wow. have proven otherwise. Regardless, Kaido is an absolute beast. Okay, okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm pause this right and I'm gonna say that I noticed that they haven't said Anel's name, not once. Mm. Yeah, he's we gone. Are. He's gone. If he not on here, he's, we're already in the top eight. Yeah, he's out of here. That's kind of crazy. He's out of here. A little bit surprised that the Do Flamingo wasn't. Well, I guess it is. No. Um. Damn. Okay. I guess Anel's not. Okay. Out of here. Maybe. Maybe a sheep. Maybe Shiki's definitely on this list. I. I would. I would hope so. Okay. Okay. Um, I wonder where they have dragons. His durability is enough to withstand a fall from the sky and attacks from high-level pirates. In his dragon form, he can level castles with his blast breath and lift entire islands with his flame clouds. Kaido defeated Luffy three times, and the first time was with how, how Momo gonna be on this Luffy. Yeah. His devil fruit power is amazing, his hockey is supreme, and getting drunk only makes him stronger. He may be swimming in lava, but we know better than to bet against Kaido. Number 7, Monkey D. Luffy. 
Luffy above Kaido? Who'd have thunk it? But even after losing multiple times to the big man, Luffy was still able to come out on top. Ow. Some yeah. may argue that it might have been I, I do have I do have Luffy. Um, I'm, I'm cool with that. I honestly just started I started daydreaming and kicked back and remembered that they haven't even said um um from Big Mom's Island son. Who? Um Kata Curry? Kata Curry, facts. Kata Curry. Yeah, if they didn't say Yamato, Kata Curry is definitely not making it. They didn't say Yamato. I, yeah, I forgot it. Damn. Yeah, this Damn. list is, this list is jacked up. <laughs> this this list is yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay, okay, okay. No, I also have Luffy uh, above Kaido now, especially after the shit he just pulled. Yeah. He I'm honestly surprised he's not higher. If they're going off of the shit we just seen in the war, mm. I thought right. five at least different circumstances, but a win is a win. He has incorporated Conqueror's Haki into his blows, letting him perform feats like splitting the clouds as other Emperor level opponents can. Wait, 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 wait. pause this. <laughs> Where's Sabo? Are we serious? Oh, wait. Pause. <laughs> Where's Sabo? Are we serious? Oh, wait. They're not going off. Wait, what? I think that was in the news too, though. I don't, maybe, all right, maybe, maybe, maybe it didn't happen yet. At 1053, maybe it didn't happen yet with the Revolutionary Army and the whole thing. I feel like it did, though. But maybe. They got news. We just saw the news about that a couple of no, but it was so we knew that Sabo freed Kuma and all that stuff, but we're now we're seeing the backstory currently, right? At 1084 and 1083 and all that stuff, but I don't remember what chapter was where we got the news, so maybe yeah. that didn't happen yet. It Sabo should happen. still be top 20, though. I mean, come on, that's crazy. I, I feel like he, I feel like when he gained the abilities of the, the flame flame for flare flare, whichever it's called, he was boxing he, with Fujitora that like first day out. That's like, what I was like, damn, he he worked with, like there was no like learning curve at all. He just, I got it. Come on, let's hoop. Dang, no Sabo is so crazy to me. This is crazy. I'm just thinking about it now. I'm like, wait, we're at seven. I see Luffy. Where's where's Sabo? The flame Tough. Emperor. Flame Emperor Sabo, not even top twenty. Tough. Tough. Mm. Most importantly, Luffy has awakened his devil fruits. Gear Fifth lets Luffy contort his body and his environments in cartoonishly creative ways, like growing to giant size or catching lightning. This upgrade allowed Luffy to finally put Kaido into the ground at last. <coughs> While Luffy isn't Pirate King yet, what he's made that? some huge are... progress in a yeah, short time, pirates. enough that he deserves a spot in the top 10. He isn't one of the new emperors for nothing. Number 6, Marshall D. Teach, aka Blackbeard. Okay. We can only assume that BB is this tough right now, but hell, he might even be higher. If this were purely a list about raw power, Blackbeard would be higher. Marshall D. Teach is the mm. only known person to have the powers of two devil fruits. Think? After he, I don't know Blackbeard over Kaido. I don't know Blackbeard over Kaido. I'm, I'm a Blackbeard over Kaido guy. You That's are. Only because I feel like it was one thing when he just had one OP fruit. That was one thing. Mm -hmm. When he got two of them, we saw what the other dude used to do with it. I feel like even if he doesn't master Whitebeard's fruit, but mastering his alone and being halfway good with Whitebeard's fruit. But check this out though. Aki matters, which is why I have Shanks over Blackbeard right now. I think that even if you have elite devil fruits, you still need to have some decent hockey to back it up. And the only time we really seen Blackbeard really use hockey is when when S Hawk pulled up on him. And then he had to use that armor hockey real quick to get himself out of that situation. If you're having Law using his Devil Fruit Awakening on you, Law's using his <laughs> his Kroom ability on you, that means your hockey needs some work. Um and and I think there's still a couple things I want to see from Blackbeard before I put him that high. So I do think as a Devil Fruit user, yeah, you can say that he is comparable to kaido or maybe higher but i think when you're looking at hockey there's no question that is kaido and kaido said this 
Roger made the One Piece, he brought the One Piece world to heal with strictly hockey. Hockey, having an elite hockey ability, being a hockey man matters in the One Piece world and Blackbeard is struggling in the hockey department, at least from what we've seen so far from him. So I think for that reason, I gotta give it to Kaido. For now, I think end, I think end of series Blackbeard, he's gonna be higher. But I think right now though, I, even at 1084 where we're at, I still think it's Kaido. I don't think he's surpassed Kaido. So, so I'm, I'm not, I'm not mad at that discussion at all. Um, I think you make good points, good retorts. I, I do want to say we both know how strong Big Mom's hockey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Respect it. Absolutely. She was, she was still penetrated by uh, Law's attacks, especially his awakening. Yes, you're right. You're right. I think that. It, but, but he couldn't, he couldn't move Big Mom in his room though. I'll say that when he used his room ability, he couldn't, he couldn't move Big Mom or Kaido. I definitely, so I'm on board with you with both of those uh, people have stronger hockey mm -hmm. than Blackbeard. Right. I just don't know if the difference is vast. Cause I will give you this. I don't think Blackbeard has, knows Ryu. I don't, but Blackbeard's a D. So whether he knows it or not, if he doesn't have untapped potential hockey, I think he, he definitely has conquered. So I feel like if he doesn't have it fully unveiled now, eventually his hockey is going to get to an elite level. How we look at it. It, it has to, it has to, if he's going, if he's going for the one piece, it has to, cause yeah. there's no way Shanks is going for that. So he got to figure out something. <laughs> yeah. He got to figure out something. A weakened white beard, black beard gained the power of quakes as well as darkness. Using the latter, he can even temporarily block someone's devil fruit powers. Still, for all his strength, Blackbeard is kind mm. of a glass cannon. Not about that. He takes more damage what, the, from the devil any fruit attack negation? that hits. Yeah. Which yeah. Is absurd That's why it's good if you're a hockey man. A huge weakness. <laughs> Don't get us wrong, Teach is still one of the four emperors for a good reason. We're also pretty sure he'll be Luffy's final pirate rival. Come on, three skulls theory. <clears throat> Number five, Monkey D. Garp. Big Garp. Luffy's grandpa is known as the hero of the Marines for good reason. Big he Garp. He may be pushing 80, but Garp is as strong as top ever. Five, top five. He can throw cannonballs with ease and can lift a ball and chain the size of a battleship. Despite knowing what we know now, devil fruit, Galaxy Garp's Impact? Hockey infused fist yeah. is positively Crazy. legendary, hence Crazy. the nickname. I was just saying this the other day, Garp really took it easy at on everybody at the war. Yeah. I think on my all-time list, I personally had Garp at four. I think I had him a little, a little high. Garp is the only set to rival the Pirate King, Gold Roger, with the two having fought numerous times. He may not have the but visibility I or reputation of some of so one piece's count. other most I didn't count characters, e. but he belongs. Oh, E? Yeah, I yeah, my all time list. I didn't count E. So like, I I I didn't either. And when he brought up the um Luffy's final like boss fight, I wasn't sure if it's gonna be Blackbeard anymore after we, what we seen in the last chapter. What I want to speak. Mm, yeah. After after that, I was like, damn. We, we we gotta we gotta leave some stuff for the revolutionary army though that's that's where i'm at it's it's kind of like where i would like that film it's it's like the pirates got their thing and then the revolutionary the revolutionary army has their thing so it's like you gotta kind of have we gotta let sabo and and, and dragon and morley and Limburg and you know bello betty and all them do their thing i believe dragon will be there right i think dragon will be the one mm -hmm. yeah power it's gotta be yeah either sabo or or dragon has to has to step in that's where we're at now i like that for sure like among right. the series elites especially if vegapunk links up with them and that would play the whole yeah number four shanks the pirate who inspired Luffy, Shanks is an enigma wrapped in a mystery whose screen time over the decades probably adds up to about an hour. Wow. Okay. 
Well, now, now that we know Shanks is four, who do you think they got over him besides his captain? Uh, it's, It has to be Rocks and Whitebeard. It has to be. But there's oh, no drag. They didn't put Dragon on here from what I'm getting from. They probably had something in the in the in the comments or something that was like we didn't include Dragon because we didn't see anything. I don't think you really need to see anything from Dragon to know that he's top ten based off narrative. But that's just me. I have a question. But <laughs> I mean, we didn't see anything from Shanks for so long. He's definitely right. Good. Right. Exactly. But uh, yeah, Shanks being four, I'm I'm cool with it. I, I think the rest is gonna be Rocks, Roger, and Whitebeard. It has to be. The fact that we didn't see Shiki though was crazy to me. But definitely, but. Definitely. I mean, two two of the top twenty, he fought them at the same time in a two v one. Yeah, he lost, but he had to go out. Like you know, what I'm saying he's fighting two of your top twenty in a two v one. That's that that means your top ten, like or, at least top fifteen, maybe. Like come on, guess she. Do you really believe the gap between Shanks and Mihawk is between four and eleven? <laughs> All right, let me stop. Um. Say that again. You you cut off for shit. No, no, no. I I I don't think so. I I don't I don't think I don't think the gap is that large. Um, uh, I believe that Shanks wins, but they are relative. Um, there's still a few more things I want to see from Mihawk. Okay, that's fair. But <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Mojo just said I don't even care. Mihawk's dog water compared to Shanks. That's what that's what Mojo said. You know, what I'm saying I didn't tell him to say that. You know, that was a miss. That was a miss order. <laughs> uh, hey, I mean, it's fine. Uh, yeah. Mojo, Mojo lost me on a couple of these. Uh, I feel like Yamato should definitely be in here. Shiki should definitely be in here. Sabo. Mistakes. Sabo should be in here. Um, but it's cool. We'll let him slide. Yeah. yeah. Mihawk not even top 10. That's <laughs> But we can infer things about how strong he is. Firstly, as a child, he kept up with the other Roger pirates during their journeys. He and Mihawk reportedly fought numerous duels. Also, despite losing an arm, and his dominant one at that, Shanks is still considered one of the strongest pirates alive. He has sparred with powerful figures like- I, I don't, this needs to stop. He <laughs> lost his dominant arm to sword wielding, and he can still rival Mihawk, his sword. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't it miss. Who is he? How? <laughs> like, he didn't, even, he didn't lose anything. That's crazy. Hold on. Give me one quick second here. Hold on. I'm going to be uh, my camera. Uh, okay, we're back. We're back. We're good. But, 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 um, yeah, I don't I don't see how. So, tell me that if, if Shanks had both of his arms today, do you think he'd be stronger than he is right now? Um, I believe Shanks got stronger from losing his arm. <clears throat> I think I think that sacrifice to the new world. You know, a betting on a new generation made him lock in because, you know, when he had two arms, he wasn't a Yonko. With one arm, now he's a Yonko. He's one of the strongest characters in One Piece. Um, see, Mihawk looks down on him. Mihawk is the one that said, oh, you're a one arm has been. Shanks was like, Mihawk, you could get it any time. I'm ready to square up. So right, right. that has nothing to do with, you know what I'm saying? That has nothing to do with Shanks. Like, if Mihawk thinks he's better than Shanks, like, what can Mihawk do about that? He could, he could fight him or... You know, or he could go his own way and do what he has to do. Listen, you know, I, I guess I know him. Mihawk went to Buggy for protection and all that. Like, Shanks not doing that. <laughs> 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 no, nah, let me stop. 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 The rhetoric getting worse is insane right now. It's cool. I, got a, I, got a, I got a Shanks question for you at the end of the video that definitely addressed, but it's cool. We're going to get through the top three. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Kainu and Whitebeard. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Stop the whole war. Mihawk was in that war. With One Piece approaching its end game what? soon, it's only mm -hmm. a matter of time before we Shanks, finally see Shanks, Shanks said, to demonstrate this. Shanks said, I'll fight anybody. Anybody can get it. And Mihawk was like, I didn't this. sign up to fight oh, Shanks. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He, that's what he said. So. Number three, Edward Newgate, <laughs> aka Whitebeard. The strongest <laughs> man is stronger than the strongest <laughs> beast. Edward Newgate, Whitebeard himself, yep. was a man <laughs> among men, and not just because of his big heart. Yep, they got Goldbeard at three. His powers could shift islands and seas alike. It's got to be Roger and Rocks. Has to be. For the last two. 
yeah, dragon should be here, but it is what it is. Giants were fodder to him. The man extinguished magma by blowing on it. In his prime, he was the Pirate King's rival. However, even sick and heavily injured, Whitebeard's last stand at Marineford is momentous. He takes numerous wounds, battles all three admirals, and fights on after getting huge mm -hmm. holes opened up in his body. And despite all that, he died standing like the absolute legend that he was. See, the only thing that's weird about this is they're using old Whitebeard. Mm, is that a prime Whitebeard? It's still a prime. I think they should be using prime Whitebeard. Old Whitebeard, it's kind of tough to say he could... Number two, Gold Roger. Okay, well, Rogers had two, so Rock's sure gotta be one. King had those two. Rocks has to be one. That puts him at the oh, pinnacle, wow. though. Cow. Oh, okay. I ain't gonna lie. Now I have a. I know I have a. Why? What's up? I, I can't. I can't. I can't see a list where Goldie Rogers isn't the number one pirate on the pirate. King. Let's. What, what's the description for this list? <laughs> strong. One piece of listen. 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 I, I can't, I can't, I can't see a list where Goldie Rogers isn't the number one pirate on the pirate. Let's, what, what's the description for this list? <laughs> strong, strong piece of Listen, listen, listen. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. But I was a person who had my all-time list. And in my all-time list, I did put Rox Dizebeck at number one. Because we have to understand what it what it took to contend with a pirate this powerful not only did he have white beard shiki kaido big mom everybody captain john all all working under him right but he forced the pirates and the marines to join forces to battle the rocks pirates he forced them he forced roger and garp had to shake hands and said let's put our differences aside just for this one moment please it was like when goku and vegeta vegeta did not want to fuse with goku and goku said all right man look <laughs> he said like if you don't work with me we everyone's dying like we have to fuse and vegeta said you know what fine that's what happened between roger and garp to make something like this happen so yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying so when you're looking at what it took to contend with rocks for me that's where i kind of have to say rocks pulled off something that was Im almost impossible he forced the pirates and marines one of the strongest marines of all time one of the strongest pirates of all time to join forces just to fight him now we don't know exactly how the fight went down in god valley but the way it was told to us from sengoku and the surrounding marines is made to look like it was a 2v1 roger and garb 2v1 against rocks that's how it was made to look yeah. so that's the reason why i have rocks as you know number one all time my god you got me that's, yeah you, you missed the hell out of me you you <laughs> you want it you want it mm. you cool with that thought it was interesting shanks used that exact same effect yeah exactly Yep. Gold D. Roger he was watching Roger. The top of the pirate world, a little kid. Mm -hmm. than nearly everyone else. He sent Odin flying with one hand. He fought Whitebeard for three days and nearly leveled the island in the process. Look at this. This is just pure conquerors hockey. Look at this. Pure conquerors. The most too. impressive of all, mm -hmm. Roger's final voyage took place while he was dying. He accomplished some of his most legendary deeds when he, he was on the edge all. of departing the world of the living. Even in death, Roger inspired nearly every great pirate of this age, directly or indirectly. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications.
Number one, Rox D. Zubek. Yeah. A pirate so heinous that the government erased him from history. Rox I agree. D. Zubek aimed to become oh, not shit. just pirate king, but king of the world. And by the sounds of his strength, he might have been able to do it. While precious little is known about him, from context clues, he paints an impressive picture. Rox had three of the four emperors, Whitebeard, Big Mom, and Kaido on his crew. I gotta see how Rox was losing. I gotta see. The Oda just gotta give us a taste. <laughs> I know he a hockey man. Yeah. I know he's hockey crazy. Rox could have had devil fruit. We don't know, but he definitely because uh, I think I think he had I think he had a devil fruit, but I think his hockey was next level. Yes, yes. I, I don't think these two teaming up to fight in two v one without your hockey being right. Rox may have fallen, but he still stands as the strongest character in One Piece so far, at least. Words cut us all. Mhm. Yep. I don't see Mihawk in this. Did you enjoy this video? <laughs> Check out these other I see no me hawking that. And be sure to subscribe <laughs> and ring the bell to be notified about our latest Ooh, videos. Cool. Um, I mean, if I was to shout out to Mojo for making this list mm -hmm. uh, some months back. Um, they got some pretty dope content. Y'all should check them out some more if you um, like anime as much as we do. Um, personally, if I had to rate the list, though, I might give them a B, maybe B plus. Oh yeah, you're generous. I'm not going anywhere above a D. Say D. Yeah. I you know feel like a lot, they, they got the majority of the right people on the list. I just don't agree with the order, and I don't agree with like. For, to me, they left they left a lot of people off. That's me though. Uh, if I don't see if I don't see Monkey D Dragon on the list, if I don't see Sabo on the list, I don't see Shiki on the list. And this is an all time list. Um, Ryuma, Ryuma should be somewhere. Um, again, we're talking about the greatest, strongest, whatever of all time. You know, in One Piece. That means we have to look back and look at everybody. Um, <clears throat> characters, a lot of those characters I just named should be there, definitely. Um, now I'm a, I'm cool with them leaving like Eam off and the Gorosei, especially at 1053 because you literally know nothing. But yeah, I mean, <clears throat> they didn't even have Green Bull. They didn't have Armaki, so which was interesting. Even though I think Green Bull is like one of the weaker admirals, I'm shocked that he didn't even make it. So it's like now we're sitting here. Who, if if you were to put Green Bull on the list, who would you take out for him? Mm, that's a good. That's a good point. But honestly, I don't think. I don't think. He's well, good. well, with with my new list, I probably wouldn't have Green Bull on there because I would be swapping. I would be putting in Sabo. I'll be putting Sabo somewhere on my on my top twenty. Um, Shiki would have to have a spot somewhere on my top twenty. Yamato would have to have a spot somewhere on my top twenty. So once you start doing that stuff, then yeah, Aramaki probably would not be there. Um, you know. Or Katsukuri. Katsukuri wouldn't be there either. Uh, but yeah, Ben yeah. Beckman would be in my yeah, top 20. Ben Beckman would be in my top 20. Hands down. Fact that he's not even on here, you know. But again, they were on chapter 1053. So maybe they didn't know, I guess. But I mean, at least in the SBS, it was stated that he's relative to Shanks. And he took Kid's arm, which is, it's assumed, theorized that he was the one that took Kid's arm. Because he didn't make it to Shanks. So, um, you know. Beckman. If, if it wasn't Beckman... That looks even worse. That looks yeah. if it was like Lucky Rue or somebody, that looks bad. That that is I, I for for kids' sake and kid fans alike, for all the kid fans out there, I hope and pray it was Ben Beckman at least. Uh, that's crazy, because I don't know. At who least. It was, but I don't think it was Ben Beckman. Let's find out it's Uta or somebody like. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was that, that, that's crazy. That would be crazy. Um, uh, I agree with you. They did miss the mark on a lot of people. I think for me, some of them are, de are debatable. I feel like three of them for shit sure should have been on here. Um, and that's mm -hmm. the Shiki, that's the Dragon, um, and at least either Sabo or Yamato. One of one of those should have been in that three. That for sure made it. Right. Part of me also wants to put a nail somewhere, but maybe that's just I don't know favoritism with the character. Yeah, I mean he lost a pre time skip Luffy. You know he did. I wait, gotta wait. see an update. Yeah. I gotta see an update. Why did he lose the pre? That was plot armor, if any. But <laughs> I I feel what you're saying. But I gotta see an update. I have to see because because even if even if Luffy is beating you with 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 the devil food ability, you gotta have top twenty level hockey to be like you know. And at that time. 
you know what I'm saying? Anel was using Mantra, which was observation hockey, but he didn't really have anything else in his arsenal outside of that and spamming his devil fruit ability. That's not enough for top 20 for me. So I got to see update. Maybe if he, you know, right now it's theorized that he's on the moon or something like that with Narians, maybe we don't know what's going on, but if he is still alive and out there, I need to see an update. That's where I'm at with Anel. Same thing with Crocodile. Crocodiles with Buggy and, and Mihawk and them cross guild. I gotta see an update from Crocodile. I would hope and pray he got stronger for his sake. That's but if he wanna play this shit, yeah, I would, <laughs> I would hope it too. But a, mm -hmm. quick to talk. Exactly. And he has a 1.9 billion berry bounty now. So for his sake, I hope. Um, okay, that's fair. Um another another person who needs to uh show us something is Lucci. Just throwing names out. Mm. Mm -mm. I'm not gonna lie. The gap looks far right now. Yeah. I mean, I've seen all I had to see. Right now, I'm I'm Lu <laughs> on the cool. Lu Lucci Lucci's in the past for me. Right now, my focus is Holy Knights and Seraphim. That and, and Gorose. Saint J Garcia, Saturn, um, the Holy Knights, you know what I'm saying? The Seraphims and, and their ability to get stronger because they're in their younger years right now. We know they can grow up. That's how Vegapunk created them to be. So that's my focus now. My, my CP0 lost me in Wano. I, I thought there were going to be some crazy things going on. They were, they were, they were fighting like Drake and a pool. And all. I'm like, all right. <laughs> and like Ezo and all them like, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, this is not top 20. Um, get me something better than this. And sure. now we have Seraphim. So S Hawk versus Mihawk. Who you got? <laughs> Disrespect never stops on. I, 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 I see, I, I, I see the narrative that's being pushed on this platform. That's, crazy. that's, that's insane. Um, thank y'all for watching this video. Yes, um, sir. Close out. I do want to say, um, you're gonna bring up your guy Shanks one last time. Okay. Nobody, nobody ever can debunk this for me when I ask the question. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna throw it up to you, Rob. This is a shot. Mm -hmm. um, as of today, we believe Blackbeard is stronger than he was three times skip, right? Yes, of course. Okay, cool, cool. So if we know that's the case and we know how strong Shanks is and how strong he's just always been, why doesn't he go get his get back at Blackbeard for putting that scar on his face? Because that's not something my goal would. You know what's interesting? Mihawk would let it slide, but I'll go, I'll revisit that later. I'll revisit that later. That's crazy. What happened was Shanks actually did go to get his get back in Marine Ford. And what did Blackbeard say? Tell it to me. I want you to say it, because I feel like it will hit harder if you tell me what Blackbeard <laughs> says. <laughs> um, what did Blackbeard say? I don't want to misquote him. What did he say? I remember he didn't want to fight. I don't remember his words exactly. He said, he said, we're not ready to fight you yet, and okay. took off. What that says to me is Shanks got it. Hands up. My bad. <laughs> I'm sorry for whatever I did to you. I can't compete with you right now. I'll try again later. Let me go back in the hyperbolic time chamber and see if I can make something happen. That's what that tells me. So Shanks did technically say Blackbeard and Marines. I'll fight everybody. But my crew, we, we can handle all of it. We can handle everybody here. And the Marines said, stand down. Blackbeard said, my fault. Mihawk said I didn't sign up to fight Shanks. All these people started turning away when they saw. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Like so, Shanks wanted smoke. He was ready. You know what I'm saying? He unsheathed the sword. That means I'm ready to go. You know what I'm saying? So that that would be my rebuttal to that. That he was ready to. My retort would be Shanks didn't have the exact same energy when he stepped on Whitebeard's ship. Said, "Hey, stand down, you and your whole crew. Don't chase after Blackbeard. Mm -hmm. He's a bad man. He mm -hmm. just did this to me." Not, it's cool. I'm gonna go handle this nigga. I heard he took out one of your your men, and that's mutiny. I, I'm, I got him because we got some unfinished business. Right. And he's a different type of dude. Mm -hmm. Don't send Ace after. Him. Right. That's what I. That, and, those. That's a quote I do remember. I can quote that from him. Yeah. I well, I, I think I think in the in the eyes of Shanks looking at Whitebeard, it was more of a respect thing because Roger and Whitebeard have history, and Shanks right. sailed the seas with Roger. So he has sort of some respect for him. Like it's the same thing where Whitebeard during the Marine Four War saw Buggy. You know what I'm saying? His first, you know, his first instinct wasn't, oh, let me go kill Buggy. It was like, oh yeah, you're one of Rogers brats that was on the crew. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like a thing where they have history together. They're like kind of like friendly rivals where he wasn't trying to go there to attack Whitebeard or anything. He was trying to warn him 
on what Blackbeard was doing ever since he left the crew. But but Whitebeard saw red because Blackbeard killed Thatch. So he was like, I'm not listening to any what anybody has to say, especially, you know, Roger's, you know, apprentice. You know, he still sees him as a little kid. He's not really thinking that Shanks is up here now. He still sees him as a little kid that was on Roger's crew. On Roger's crew. So that's the way it's kind of like a respect thing of like, oh, this is, you know, Whitebeard's the OG. Let me try to talk him down. And Shanks realized I'm not gonna be able to talk Whitebeard down. If I if I no, try I, to I if I try that. to talk him down, I'm gonna have to fight him. And that's right. gonna be an issue. I can't fight Whitebeard. I'm saying, down. why are we even talking Whitebeard down? Why don't we both go get this? look what he did to your face? Why would you let that slide? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so you're oh. old. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, big, big. It ain't no other emperor I know that would just would have let that scar just slide. He say, Let's but we have to realize it's Shanks though. Shanks is somebody that you remember in the first episode of One Piece, literally, or or one of the first episodes of One Piece. Shanks was letting people in the bar like push him around. You know what I'm saying? And even Luffy, Luffy was saying exactly what you're saying right now. Yo, what you, what, where's your energy at? Like, what's going on? Like, are you scared of him? Are you weak to him? What's up? And Shanks was like, nah, like, I'm just chilling. I'm relaxing. Like, we don't need to turn up right now. Like, he's more chill. But if his friends are put in danger or whatever may have you or something like that, then that's when he steps up. But because this is White, this is Whitebeard's battle. Shanks is a third party, right? So you have to see it from the perspective of, I, I can't really tell Whitebeard what to do in this situation. I could advise him, but Raj, I was on Roger's ship. Him and Roger were rivals. He doesn't have to listen to me if he doesn't want to. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of where it was Shanks, where Shanks was trying to firefight. He was trying to prevent something that he saw happening, but it was more of a thing where it's like, this is not my battle. This is not my thing. If Whitebeard wants me to fight with him, he will ask for me to help him fight. But Whitebeard is going to say, no, guys, this is my fight. Even if you look at the, in the Marine Four War, what happened? Whitebeard at one point in the war said, everybody, Marco, all of y'all, everybody stay over there. I'm going to fight all the Marines by myself. You guys escape, right? That's Whitebeard's mindset. Whitebeard's like, it was my mess that I let Blackbeard join my crew and kill Thatch. So it's my mess to clean up, right? Ace just got caught in a crossfire. I'm supposed to be the one to protect everybody. I'm the father figure. It's all me. All this happened because of me, because I let Blackbeard on the crew. That's Whitebeard's thinking. So that's why he didn't really look outside to see Shanks and try to, yo, Shanks, help me out. No, no, no. Like, he didn't want to involve anybody in his issues. And furthermore, he felt like he didn't even need Shanks to fight Blackbeard. And realistically, he didn't. Whitebeard fought, yeah, he fought Blackbeard when he was half dead and he almost killed him. Like, <laughs> he literally almost killed Blackbeard. Blackbeard's whole crew had to shoot him Plus, like, he was already damaged, you know what I'm saying? And he died standing up. So it's like, he didn't really do nothing. Like, <laughs> let's be honest. I'm 100% on board with Whitebeard. I'm not I'm not upset with him for not wanting to uh, engage Shanks, because that is, you know, his own mess. Mm -hmm. I felt like I just wanted to see a little bit more aggression out of Shanks to engage with that. But like you said, he is more of the laid back type of guy. Yeah. And we want to fight when, I guess, it's 100% necessary. When it's serious. Even with Kid. Shanks wasn't taking Kid seriously at first, but when he looked into the future, and he saw that kid was going to start attacking his friends and the ships that they're on and all this stuff. That's when Shanks said, okay, this dude's doing a little too much. And he looked like a minute into the future and said, yeah, all right, you're, tr you're trying to do all that? Say less. And then one hit KO'd him and his entire crew. So it's like, <laughs> it's kind of that thing where, you know, Shanks is, is he'll, he'll, he'll definitely approach Blackbeard. Let's say Blackbeard, you know, pulls up. If Blackbeard pulls up to Elbath and says, you know what, I'm going to start attacking people around here that are friends of Shanks, Shanks will fight him. And Shanks will win in this current state. But Blackbeard wouldn't do that because he knows he's not ready for Shanks. You know, so that's where it is. Blackbeard's trying to avoid going fighting Shanks right now as much as possible. Uh, as I much as possible. And Marine Ford, he saw Shanks and he was like, damn, <laughs> gotta go. <laughs> gotta go. Okay. Uh, um, I'm not mad at anything you said. Um, I think eventually... We do need to see Shanks fight someone capable. I, I, I don't want anybody, nobody kid level or below. We need to get to like, show us what we want to see. Cause he didn't even fight in this movie. Mm -hmm. So eventually I need to see that type of stuff. Um, who would you want to see him fight next? Cause I want to see him fight Teach at some point. I'm assuming the end of the show. A lot of people thinking Teach is going to kill Shanks. Me personally, I need to see Shanks fight Mihawk. So I can finally be at peace myself the community can be at peace i think there's no more better setup than there is right now 
Mihawk is affiliated with the Yonko crew. Buggy has staked his claim. He said that he wants to go for the One Piece now. He said, I don't care if Mihawk tries to intimidate me. I don't care if Crocodile tries to intimidate me. I now want to join the race for the One Piece. Which means that if Mihawk and Crocodile want to use Buggy's resources, they are going to have to align themselves with that statement. As much as they hate it, they have now entered into the race to find the One Piece. Which means that they're going to run into Shanks at some point. And we know what's going to happen. It's the perfect setup. Oda can't miss this. If Oda misses this, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I'll do with myself if Oda misses this setup. This is the perfect setup right now. Shanks versus Mihawk. Get Crocodile out of here. Ben Beckman, you got him. Deal with him. Brush that off quickly. Shanks versus Mihawk is a perfect setup the only thing that i think would save me hulk <laughs> is is buggy saying shanks and i are friends old history xyz let's not fight each other let's do a davy back fight or some sweet like that or some <laughs> chill that's the only wow. thing i can see that would save wow. that that the, you know that scenario from going down the way i want it to go down but i would love to see a shanks versus me hawk i would finally get to see what's good and they don't have to kill each other or anything like that but just let them know, like, who's running this. You know what I'm saying? And then Zoro can come in later after, I, I mean, well, or or S-Hawk could come in later and, and clean up what they got to clean up. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I'm at right now. And yes, I said S-Hawk because S-Hawk is elite. S-Hawk have Blackbeard say dang. So I, I'm going to put that out there. S-Hawk have Blackbeard. <laughs> but S-Hawk have Blackbeard on skates. Let's just be serious. Man just said Mihawk gonna get body by filler plot. Have a day. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. That's that's the only thing to save it. Yeah, listen, I, listen, I, wow, I, wow, I, wow. listen. I, I, personally, I don't think Mihawk is weak. I think that what? Shanks is. I just think Shanks is that strong. I do. I, I think I think Shanks is. If you look at all right, if you look at Jordan and Kobe, like. That's the way I see Roger and Shanks. I see Roger, I see Shanks being the modern day version of Roger. He watched Roger, he has a similar fighting style. His hockey is elite on that level. We've never seen Future Sight this advanced before. Shanks was looking into the future for like three minutes, it looked like. Everybody else is a few seconds. Like his hockey is really Roger tier. That's what it looks like to me. And when you're looking at Shanks, you gotta think of legends like Roger, Whitebeard, rocks that's who shanks is right now so or even even a prime garb so like if you're putting all that into consideration i think that blackbeard you know people like that they're they're not ready they're not ready mihawk i think mihawk is a better swordsman um but i think in terms of hockey i think that's where he would fall short and i would love to see it happen so we can finally know and i think this is the perfect setup Bit buggy said he wants to find the one piece that means it's time that's what it means to me. Okay. Um, my God, you said a lot. You said a lot of things to me. A lot of things I'm about to be thinking about for the next. <laughs> week. I think you made a lot of good points. Um, I think I think uh, Goldie Rogers and the Shanks is definitely the closest thing to a Jordan and Kobe comparison. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that Mihawk's swordsmanship skills are LeBron esque. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I think the showdown that we we talking about. I hope for your sake it does happen because then we I, I can only know. I, I, all be right. I want to know. I want to know. Definitely. Cause now I ain't gonna lie, you sold me on it, so now I'm gonna be a little bit upset if this doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would, I would hope that, cause that was the perfect setup. The moment I saw Buggy say, "I want to enter the race," because before it looked like it was just gonna be a cross guild thing, and Buggy wasn't even gonna try it. But now that Buggy said, "I want to try," it, and he announced it, mm -hmm. it's over. You know what I'm saying? Mihawk and Crocodile, what are they gonna do? Cause if they kill Buggy, Buggy's entire crew is gonna turn on them. So are they going to solo all of Buggy and all of his crewmates and the whole assets? And all? No, it would make no sense to do that. They got to go for the One Piece now. But they, it, wouldn't make it wouldn't make sense to do that. You know what I mean? So they're going to have to follow what Buggy says. Unfortunately for them, now they have to join the race. So I think it's a perfect setup. Buggy, Buggy running into Shanks, old rivals, old friends. We know Buggy's not fighting, so. <laughs> but he's so, going to be close in the race. All right. Like honestly, if the when the day comes that Luffy does find the One Piece, I wouldn't be surprised if Buggy was on the island. That's um, exactly. I could, I could. Buggy's like that. Damn near by luck. Um, well, Rob, thank you so much. You uh, gave great insight. 
represented your guys shanks very well no uh, doubt man no doubt great points let us know what y'all think down in the comment section below who y'all got me hawk or shanks it's gonna be a tough fight i can't wait to see it um also check out my guys page down below it will be in the description and check out all his skits um theory videos debates lots of great entertainment down there in the content uh down below let me know what you think until next time peace and tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way and guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until i look away